Shut up, Smarks. Ray Ross Redux. No, I won't tap out. I won't tap out. All of you butthurt suck. Just stop watching Raw. Stop watching Raw. So this week is going to be the uh, musicular pre-purview of uh, Money in the Bank on the WWE Network from the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis, Missouri. So we got five matches. I'm sure one or two more will be added. Like last week, I mean, that ended up being something I, I cor- quote, correctly predicted, unquote, that there was one match added. It's like, Because eh. I, I, I guessed a, a few of them incorrectly. And not a big deal, but, you know. So I'm just going to preview the matches that we got here. Uh, so I'm just going to, just from the Wikipedia page, just going to go from the bottom right to the top, I guess, just as well. Nothing labeled officially as a pre-show match. So let's just uh, get at it. Naomi will be defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Lana. After Lana, you know, made her debut on SmackDown, and apparently that's all you need to do in order to qualify for a women's title shot, I guess. Well, I mean, she did finagle her way into it. You know, she wanted to be a part of the Money in the Bank women's ladder match, and she McMahon said, LOL, nope. And then she attacked Naomi during a six-woman tag match. It was last week's episode, so it's not... I haven't seen this week yet, so I don't know how much further it's progressed. So I'll check that out tonight or tomorrow, I'm sure, before the actual pay-per-view. Or stream per view, depending on uh, the legality of the uh, means by which you're watching the event well if you get if you watch it on the stream you get your money's worth because you're the kind of person if you can't justify having to pay for it you kind of can't justify having to watch it either because you complain you're the people who you watch streams generally speaking do a lot of complaining about what they watched on that stream which they i don't know it's just maybe it's just me i mean they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to change because you say you don't like it. They're not going to change because a million people say they don't like it. The fact that a million people say they don't like it means a million people are talking about it. They count that as a as a as a good thing. They count that as positive. You know, not positive, but they count that as a, as a, there's no such thing as bad advertising, as the saying goes. I don't know. I kind of don't think Lana's. I mean, I haven't even seen her wrestle yet, so I couldn't begin to tell you how effective a wrestler she is. So I'm not going to be too surprised to see Naomi defend her title, but I wouldn't be really disappointed, I suppose, either. It'd be interesting to see everything that Lana does. I mean, up till now, she's only been more or less a mouthpiece for Rusev, and now he doesn't really seem to need a mouthpiece anymore. He seems to be getting better at talking, and now she's doing her thing, and... Her thing might be winning the SmackDown Women's Championship. You never know. I mean, Jinder Mahal won, so why not? There's one more thing to make uh, all you people give WWE what they don't consider to be bad advertising. Because you're talking about it. So, eh, we'll see what happens. Maybe it will actually end up being a may yay 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 thing. You are listening to Ring Rust Redux on Gerbronology TV. So next up from the Wikipedia page for WWE Money in the Bank on the WWE Network sees the uh, Women's Money in the Bank ladder match for number one contendership of the uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. It sees Carmella taking on Tamina and Natalia and Charlotte Flair and she who I believe will possibly, I don't know about probably, but possibly come out on top of this one who I'd like to see win anyway. I'd like to see Becky Lynch win it. Charlotte hasn't won the SmackDown Women's title yet. Natalia hasn't held a women's title in quite a while, I believe. And I don't think Tamina's won any titles yet. And Carmella went all her time in NXT without women winning the women's title. And hasn't won any women's title in WWE specific. But, you know, two of them are there just to be, you know extra bodies mostly well the thing is they've only got so they only seem to have the six or seven women like overall 
I don't know what Alicia Fox is doing. She's on 205 Live. I don't know which, if she's associated with Raw still or or what's going on with that. But uh, anyway, I, just, I, I wouldn't be disappointed, really, if either of them, well, maybe Carmella. Nothing personal against her, but, you know, she's Carmella, and he's James Ellsworth. So as entertaining as they are, I don't think they're uh, liable to win the title anytime soon. But any of the other four, I wouldn't really mind. Although I would certainly like to see the Celtic Invasion running wild through SmackDown Live again. You are listening to Ring Rust Redux on Gerbronology TV. So next up we have the Usos, Jimmy and Jay, defending their SmackDown Tag Team Championships against the New Day, which will be either Big E and or Kofi Kingston and or Xavier Woods. So it will either be... Rudy Tootie, Tootie Booty, or Booty Rudy. Because, well, you know, Big E is the booty, and Xavier Woods is Tootie because it's Francesca, and I guess that just means Kofi Kingston is Rudy because he's sort of the hype guy. Anyway, so, I, I, you know what I mean, I just like naming tag teams because Team Road Scholars... You know, Team Hell No. At least that was a bit of a name, but still had team in it because, you know, you had to know they were a team. Anyway. <sighs> the the art of naming tag teams is sort of a lost nowadays. Not so much, you know, not so much thought being put into it, but oh well. I do anticipate that uh, the Usos, at least for the time being, will defend their championships. I have no doubt that the... Uh, the new day will get the title somewhere down the road, but not just yet. They might. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be disappointed or anything if they do win it. I just don't see it going quite that way yet. This is their first time challenging for those specific titles, so I think we'll uh, let them uh, chase them for a little bit first. But uh, in the meantime, hopefully uh, not after one match. Uh, hopefully we'll go a little bit further. That's a bit of a bit of a feud because I'd, I'd really hate for the Usos to be done with that by the time this match is over. You are listening to Ring Rust Redux on Gerbronology TV. Seek and ye shall find, or I'll flick your ear. You're as dumb as I am! Uh. You're listening to Wrestling Superstar, the Triple X Sex Express, Sexy Eddie, and you're listening to Ring Rust, the one and only wrestling radio show. Radio C, Radio Do. This is Fanboy Mark Jabroni, you are listening to Ring Rust. So next match, we actually, I'm actually pretty much done. I got two matches left to talk about. Of the five, so, um, you know. So we have the uh, WWE Championship uh, number one contendership uh, Money in the Bank match which sees Kevin Owens uh, taking on Baron Corbin Sami Zayn Dolph Ziggler Shinsuke Nakamura and who I believe should be or might be or whatever be the ultimate winner of this match AJ Styles I don't know I mean I can see Kevin Owens winning it too I can see Dolph Ziggler maybe winning it because he'd be probably a good opponent at the very least, whether or not he'd win it is secondary. Shinsuke Nakamura, I think, is probably a bit too early for him. And I kind of just don't see Baron Corbin or Sami Zayn as even really contenders, let alone, you know, champions. I mean, Baron Corbin maybe, but Sami Zayn is just kind of... He's plugging away at it. I don't think he's... I don't have anything against him, certainly. I just don't see it just yet. But then again, who saw Jinder Mahal winning the title? So... Nobody, as it turns out. I don't think anybody, really. I, did anybody predict Jinder Mahal was going to win that match? Probably nobody. Like, maybe an outside chance. There might have been an outside chance, maybe. Someone might have said, technically, anybody can win in WWE. You know, everyone's a three-count away from winning a match. Well, I'll look forward to seeing AJ Styles hopefully winning that match. And at any rate, I assume uh, I assume one way or the other, regardless of who wins it, the match is just going to be phenomenal. You are listening to Ring Rust Redux on Gerbronology TV. Uh, 
This is 93.5 CHMRFM. Randy Savage invented black. In fact, he invented the entire visible spectrum of colors except pink. Tom Cruise invented pink. And Macho Man was the fourth wise man. He brought baby Jesus the gift of beer, which Jesus wore proudly to his dying day. The other wise men, jealous of Jesus' obvious gift favoritism, used their combined influence to have Randy omitted from the Bible. Shortly after, all three died of top rope elbow drop related deaths. on Facebook, tinyearl.com slash rayrust. Follow me on Twitter at Mark Gibroni and subscribe to Jabronology TV, youtube.com slash fanboy Mark Gibroni. So the last match we have, the main event for WWE... Money in the Bank on the WWE Network from the Scotts Trade Center in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. We'll see Jinder Mahal with the Singh Brothers. And I don't know if just they do anything like, you know, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay, because that would make them the Sing 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 Brothers, I guess. So, or maybe they're anthropomorphic, uh, anthropomorphic, uh, the Animals that look like humans, act and talk like humans. And they're just the sing exclamation mark brothers. Anyway, I'm making dumb jokes. And I can only imagine you're sitting there in anticip... ...patient of me stopping these lame musical jokes. So, the main event, Jinder Mahal defending his WWE... Heavyweight Championship against Randy Orton in a no stipulation or anything. It's just main event. It's just a title match. So will Randy Orton get his title back? Who knows? Will Jinder Mahal defend his title and hang on to it until John Cena comes back? Like I keep hearing. So Jinder Mahal can be the one who helps put John Cena over that mark to surpass Nature Boy Ric Flair because WWE. I don't know. I think that might have to be my prediction. I think Jinder Mahal, at least for the time being, if they don't want him to look like a fluke, because they're heading into the Indian market, so they want a strong Indian champion, so they don't want to have a transitional champion. So he's probably going to hang on to it for a couple of pay-per-views. He kind of has to. And you know what? The fact that you hate it means you're booing for it. And WWE wants you to boo for him, because he's the bad guy. He's Tar Heel. He is the Snidely Whiplash in this equation. And they don't want you liking anything that he does, including holding that title. So, what you need to understand is WWE is cater, is not catering, I suppose, is skewing their booking towards both the casual, you know, the, the, towards the casual fan, towards the enthusiastic fan, towards the internet fan, who thinks they're insiders because they know all the wrestlers' real names. And they get really huffy when they see CM Punk at the airport and say, Hey, Phil, because you're not his friend, so he's not going to respond. And that's the way he should be responding. That's what he should be doing. If people who didn't actually know me, like didn't know me in any way, like didn't know me personally or didn't know me on Facebook or know me on Twitter or whatever, saw me and called me by my real name, I wouldn't know who they are, so I might not respond to them. That's what a human being does. I mean, I'll turn around and say, someone calling me? Like, do I know anybody here? Uh, you know. 
I don't know. Maybe maybe that's just me and him. Of the billions of people on the planet, maybe it's just myself and CM Punk who do that, who react that way. So, eh? So anyway, I predict that Jinder Mahal's probably going to come out on top of this one. And for the time being, anyway. For this particular match, after this, I don't know. Well, who knows? John, well, John Cena's coming back on July the four, on 4th of July for that SmackDown. So, um, and apparently he's going to be a free agent. And apparently Eric Bischoff doesn't like that idea. So, anyway. Well, it's Eric Bischoff. And it's John Cena. And it's Jinder Mahal. So, take it or leave it. Believe what you want. You're going to anyway. So, hopefully, uh, hopefully, at the very least, hopefully no one ends up getting hurt during the show. I mean, certainly I don't want anyone getting hurt. I mean, I don't, I don't dislike any wrestlers in particular. So, it would kind of be sad if either of them got hurt. But, anyway. Let's just hope it's a decent enough show. So that even those who decide that they can't justify paying for the pay-per-view or paying for the network can have little or nothing to complain about. That would be surprising. That would be su- that would be genuinely surprising if these butthurt, tosspot internet wrestling fans can't find anything to complain about. They will, but it would be nice for a change. But, eh, sure. This is a great cat guitar shredder! Your electricity in my pants. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, it's in hot in here? Or was I just engulfed in flames and broads? Zombie guards, seize him. Tell me that's not fun to say. Me on Facebook, tinyearl.com slash ringrust. Follow me on Twitter at Mark Jabroni and subscribe to Jabronology TV, youtube.com slash fanboy Mark Jabroni. WWE.com recently posted a list of uh, the first four competitors revealed for the uh, upcoming uh, May Young Classic. Rather than just bring it off a limited list like that, I'm going to read off a, a, a bunch more ladies who were revealed before this. WWE is just making it official that they're, they're teasing it a little bit, so I'll just give you a few more names on top of that. So uh, they'll be hosting a 32-woman tournament set to begin uh, filming in July, entitled the May Young Classic, and it'll be taking place at the Full Sail University, uh, where NXT tapings happen. And uh, here are just a few of the women who will be competing in the tournament. We have Zhao Zia, I hope that's pronounced properly, Mary Kate, formerly known as uh, Andrea, formerly known as Rosie uh, Lala Love in TNA, uh, Bianca Blair, uh, Danielle Kamala, or Camella, maybe, because it's E instead of an A. Uh, Julia Hole, Kimberly Ann Frankel, otherwise known as Kimberly. Lacey Evans, Victoria Gonzalez, Sarah Logan, formerly known as Crazy Mary Dobson, and Sarah Elizabeth Bridges in NXT. Tanera Mil- Milo, is that an L or an I? Milo, I think. Thea Trinidad, a name known through... Uh, she was in TNA as well before. I mean, not that a bunch of these other names aren't known. Uh, Kyrie Hojo, Marty Bell, previously of TNA. Mia Yim, also previously of TNA, and someone who I'm looking forward to seeing in action in a WWE ring. Uh, Evie, pretty well-known name on the independents. Uh, Nixon Nixwell, and Demi Bennett. So that goes a bit above and beyond the four names that WWE is... Uh, siphoning out to us, but, you know, one name I think that's curious by its omission, maybe not omission, but maybe she didn't submit for it, maybe they didn't ask her, I don't know, maybe that owl's just too wounded, but I would have liked to have seen Lufisto on that list.
that's it for another show, kiddies. Check me out on Facebook, where you can keep track of all the news that's right on the mark, from around ringside to the latest concerts. See you at the shows. Later days. This is 93.5 CHMR-FM.